corals spawn once a year and it's uh, so this is linked to the sea surface temperature with the moon with the moon cycle lunar cycles so at the end of summer when it gets warmer six to seven days after the full moon three and a half hours after sunset so it's different in florida than in mexico than in panama because the sun sets at different times so you sort of have to be there and if you miss it then you have to wait another year but it's really spectacular we put the nets out, then we sit around and wait for several hours on the boat, and then we go back in, and nothing happens, nothing happens, and suddenly it's just madness in the reef. Everybody is releasing the gametes, and it's beautiful. It's really, really striking. Julia, the German student, said, oh, these guys in Florida are doing the same thing that we've been doing for the past two years. And she was starting to get worried. Oh, my God, we're replicating this study. And I said, no, well, let's just find out what they're doing, and then maybe we can compare our results. And it sort of developed from that. So the question was whether there is a um, genetic component to the response of larvae to thermal stress. And can we design protection strategies and manage, management strategies for corals in one location that would be effective for a location in a different place. And this sort of uh, situation gave us the opportunity to compare these two different populations from Florida and from Mexico under similar conditions when they spawn and they are exposed to higher sea surface temperatures because it's the end of summer, how are they going to cope with increasing sea surface temperatures over the years? What, what turned out is that there is a very strong geographic component to the response. So in other words, the, the populations from Mexico may not respond the same way as the populations from Florida, and that needs to be taken into consideration. When, when we design future conservation strategies.